Oh, oh, oh. I'm a gamer. Not like one of those cool modern ones, but old school, fat, socially awkward kind of guy. I'm also quite bad at games in general, and yet here I am, playing Red Dead 2 for the first time in 2024. The idea is simple. Never shower, never shave or cut hair, don't make friends unless they're gamers, avoid women at all costs, and have fun. In the beginning I'm already forced to break all the rules by riding into town for some errands like save Mary Sue, help a stranger. And then boom, explosion from the past, right in the beginning. An ex, running back as soon as she needs help. A help for the family that never treated you right. Please, Arthur, will you help me? You're gonna have to find someone else to run your errands. Okay. Hi, Arthur, come here a minute. Can I ask you a favor? Probably not. Uh, yep, there is a kid in the gang. As you can imagine, his father isn't exactly the best role model. He's here, but it's not the best role model. I didn't want to do anything in the beginning, but let's get serious for a moment. The kid needs at least some father figure. Someone needs to explain to him stuff like peace fireworks or how fun it is to explore abandoned houses. So we've gone fishing. Went as well as you would imagine. Had to move, found a kidnapped German guy, Brought him back to his family. That's a good thing. Oh, oh my balls. I'm gonna run this son of a bitch down. Apparently there is a fucking gamer girl on your team. Uh, gone shopping with her. She starts making fun of another man while reading his letter. That's a red flag, but the shooting was fun. You know what's more fun? Modesty. And robbing a bank with your friends. And shooting. And then hitting a bar with your friend. And more shooting. I didn't talk about the story, but basically the gang is fucked and on the run. Right now we're in the town where there are two main families and we're screwing both of them, because according to the plan, they both have tons of money and we need that to get to like a tropical island or something, burned everything that one family has, steal horses from another. I know it seems kind of uneven, but don't think about it too much. It's it's just a, it's a plan. Also, check this embarrassing 360s. I know it's painful, but look what I have to deal with. Come on. Move, Bill. Odrisco no Boys is a rival gang that has been fucking us over for a long time now. And now this idiot comes up with the most stupid idea. He convinced everyone to meet and make peace with the fuckers who've been trying to kill us since like the beginning of the game. They want to parley? It's a trap. Well, of course, it's... Probably a trap, but what do we got to lose finding out? Get shot. And got shot we indeed, as well as kidnapped and tortured. However, instead of being used as a bait for another trap, I massacred the entire fucking camp where I was kept. My attacks were so vicious and flawless that the game stopped me from ending the man's life just for him to tell the story. So yeah, about those families, uh, we fucked up, they, they weren't happy, and uh, another trap, they, they're not as stupid as we thought, yay. And 
here is one of the moments where I thought that Arthur and Micah are destined to be best friends. Uh, I will talk about... I, I know, yeah, but I will talk about that later. Either way, you're a dead man. Morgan? Shit! Oh. He was a good kid. I don't really remember who this guy was, so I, it's not a big deal. Uh, that's the first family dealt with, but the second one really crossed the line. And now the whole gang is pissed. Where's my goddamn son? Where is he? Where's my son? They took him, didn't they? They took my son. I will get that boy back, so help me God. Get down here now! You inbred trash! Get the hell off our land! If you ain't gonna be civilized about this... Fuck yeah! Not only Dutch comes with the best plans, but he also a leader who cares fully about everyone around him. By this point, I pretty much ignored all the possible interactions, and I don't really know these characters, but damn, the coolness of this dude is just through the fucking roof. There! Find Jack! And find... Ah! Yeah, we shoot everybody, and Dutch is fucking ruthless. Ah! Ah! You want me to kill you too, old woman? You bastards! Where's the boy? You killed my son! Oh, and I will surely kill the rest of them unless you start talking. Where is the boy? All right, we get her out of here. Uh, uh, what about down? Uh, uh, That's uh, right, burn uh, this dog uh, to the ground! Uh, yeah. Also, he puts the hag's ass in my face. That's not really friend alike. I knew you'd come. Soon enough. You are some of the coward. Like How's it looking up there? I think we're clear. Uh, uh, this is probably like the halfway through the game already, or like a third of it, something like closer to the half. And uh, after the previous arc, we had to change the location, obviously, and uh, found a new gamer who's fucking based. Art is lies, but the vagina, that is truth. Breasts is truth. Art, it's for idiots, but here. What is it? Uh, it's just a little doodle. As you can see, I haven't been treating this game too seriously, but I never do, at the beginnings at least. It always takes me a while to just fuck around to finally get immersed in the game, and unfortunately here it took me too long. By this point I only sometimes actually cared about what's going on rather than just speedrunning through the main story. Well, shortly it might be due to the fact that I'm not the biggest GTA fan and initially I thought that this game is just the horse GTA. So like the same game but with no radio. Like, ugh. And it took me a while to realize that this is not the case. But being more serious, it could be because Arthur is already an established character and I couldn't really empathize with him until I saw him started to change. Uh, I'm more of a Henry from Kingdom Come Deliverance or Harry Dubois from Disco Elysium kind of guy. Uh, I love character development stories where a guy gradually turns from like a fuckboy to a reliable and confident knight or from a delusional alcoholic uh, to, like, hopefully with your help, to an actual crime-solving detective and a decent human, and, like, on the way to being a decent human at least. 
Uh, Arthur is more like Gerald or whatever his name is from The Witcher. Uh, I, I don't really like him, that's the whole another story. Uh, but basically, already a hero doesn't really need you, like the player, and, and can't really grow or change. I might be wrong, but that's the impression he always given me. Uh, I enjoyed John much more as a character in that sense. Uh, also, I know Red Dead is not an RPG, but whatever, that's just examples. When it comes to the gang, uh, I didn't really do any gang members' quests, never talked to them, never listened to their conversations, and I regret that. Uh, and I'm probably too old and lazy, but the whole thing was kinda overwhelming. Uh, so the adventures didn't start from the beginning. At the beginning of the game, you are already fucked and you don't know why or what happened. Yes, I can read the journal and talk to other characters, but am I gonna? So for an ignorant guy like me, the story just kind of floats, and I need for it to sink in like sand before it is able to actually build something for me to comprehend. I really love how Cyberpunk made me care right from the beginning. First you did this little mission with Jack, and it's whatever, he's gonna die soon. So how can a game make me care? By doing this cool montage that illustrates that V and Jack became great friends and are running together for quite a while. So when he dies, me, who saw this guy like 20 minutes ago in real life, like me, me, uh, understands that that's the loss. Like, I'm not gonna cry about him, but at least I see the value in this character. Uh, and then during the game, you are introduced to new characters one by one, and you have time to digest and see if you like them or not or whatever. Here, the game just dumps you in the shitstorm with like 20 other people who you don't know and have no reason to care. Especially if you haven't played Red Dead 1 like me. <laughs> so, if you are like me, I would advise you to just fake it till you make it. Just pretend that you care until you do. This game is worth it. Anyway, we saved the boy, remember? The boy got kidnapped and stuff. Uh, his father is grateful, so it's time for a party. Thank you, Arthur. I'm, I don't know how to say it. Thank you. I understand. Also, that's how like most of the men interaction are going on, like no one just knows how to say shit, that's kind of funny. As a true gamer, I kept my distance and got drunk by myself. Oh, good God. Quickly, bring him in here. Right here. And sit him down in this chair. I'll save as much as I can, but I'll have to amputate. What? You did a good thing bringing him here. But now, I'd recommend moving along. You do not want to see this. All right, it's come to this. Jesus. Remember the French dude who sent me on the rant? Uh, he's back, baby, and he's golden! Couldn't you have painted some drawers on her? I'd paint her in her natural state, as she was and will be in paradise. To be naked is to be free, innocent, alive. Hey, you got a picture of my wife here. That's my mama. Stop looking at my husband's buttocks. Mm -hmm. Stop looking at my mama. Well, man. This is disgusting. A nerve on you. That's it. Oh, come on, Mildred. This is no place for us. Come here. Hey. I am a bitch. You filthy little man. Oh, oh. come on, horse. We'll leave it. Hey, I'm coming after you, Frenchie. Hey. All right. After some time of following Dutch's plan to screw the Italian dude, that uh, he didn't kidnap the guy, but but like he 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 bought him. Yeah, we're screwing him over in the city and uh, not necessarily hiding. Uh, good old old Drisco boys paid us a visit. Government, lady. Oh, 
Mercedes. God damn it. Why didn't you get inside? And miss all this? and killed that guy that I don't remember. So no shit, we have to fucking move after this, uh, but before that, I stumbled upon two idiots who were ready to risk their lives in order to uh, impress a woman. Uh, I I'd never do anything stupid like that. Uh, in all seriousness, the game locked me in this sword shotgun, uh, so it was kind of hard not to kill them. <laughs> I'm ready. You're deranged. Shoot away, sir. My bottle and his brains, if you please. At least I have brains. Fine shooting. Over here. Ma'am, you all right? Ma'am? You okay, ma'am? Talk to me. I'm not gonna hurt you. Just like every time before, Dutch's plan worked perfectly. In the previous arc, while looking for non-existing gold, we lost two men and got a child kidnapped. Now, while trying to lie to that Italian dude, Dutch fully believes everything that he hears from him and look where it led us. So that was a fun little shootout. Obviously Dutch wasn't too happy with how his Italian friend treated him, uh, so he came up with a new plan uh, to pay him back. Uh, and don't you dare thinking that it's revenge, that's strictly business, cause we need the money to flee to some tropical island for a new and easy life. Uh, but before that... In his infinite wisdom, Dutch comes up with a new, bigger plan. Uh, now this guy forces me to buy a suit, cut my hair and shave. Look, now, instead of becoming a viking and chasing a tiger, I played a fixed you. poker game with some idiot on a cruise ship. Uh, it's just kind of cool actually, but deprives me of fully becoming an animal. Did, uh, did you lose a tiger? <laughs> Hi, darling. Do you want to have some fun? Not right now. Well, that's too bad for you. You want me to show you what fun looks like? No, thanks. That's all right. But you'll be missing out. Uh, you'd probably think that I'm a fool, but I kinda like Micah. Remember me saying that? Uh, his missions are fun. Uh, he and Arthur have this Naruto Sasuke vibes. And overall, he seems want? like a misunderstood oh, member of the gang, sunshine. who's also a gamer and a potential oh, friend for Arthur. What you want, Micah? Hmm. Well, I, I want a friend, Arthur. Yeah, as you can tell, my social skills are like slightly below average. Anyway, back to the story. 
Dutch, who is definitely not offended, has one last plan to end it all with the Italian dude. And also the game, because we will have all the money in the world. Uh, that, that's what I thought, at least. Name your price, every man have a price. Eh? Okay, okay, no, I surrender, I surrender. I... <clears throat> After some negotiations, uh, Dodge forgave the guy and we made peace. So now Dutch has a final plan to rob another bank, and it goes as perfect as always. Get over here! We lost John. Killed? Arrested. I couldn't help. Well, we better go. We'll be next. You goddamn sons of bitches! Lenny, he's... he's dead! I haven't treated my little gamer challenge seriously, too. But somewhere here, I finally got the game. Right in the middle of the game, my thick skull and my stone heart let this game through. Since here I started to care about Arthur and some other people in the game. Because the guy who just got killed is Lanny. He wasn't really revolving around main story missions, uh, but he was a cool dude with a couple of feel-good missions. And now he's dead, now I'm invested, now I care. Again, I know he's not in the video much, but uh, that's one of the characters who I actually remember. Uh, uh, but what about Hosea? He also got killed. Who? Yeah, the situation we are in might look slightly off-putting, uh, but don't worry, because Dutch has a plan. I got it. A boat. We sneak onto the docks with all the money. Look out on the left. Stay low. Duck. Quick. Hide behind the chair. I don't see why we have to check the train. They just robbed Lemoyne National Bank. It's not like they're gonna take the first line out of town. And then onto the random ship. And finally, we can have a little Sorry. rest. At least we got some money now. Money and loyalty. Wake, wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! <laughs> So now we're on an island with a sugar plantation that is run by some rich guy who doesn't really treat the, his workers the best way possible. Uh, so in order for us to get out, we have to get involved in the resistance. Kinetis! So not only we stuck on a random island in the middle of the battle we have nothing to do with, but now there is a whole fucking battleship we have to fight. Before this beach episode I was kinda feeling that the game is getting close to an end, but oh boy was I wrong.
The beach episode was crazy, and now we are coming back! Imagine that. Uh, I can talk shit about Dutch all I want, but the guy is a leader. He's in the same shit as anyone else, and he leaves no one behind. Now we're heading back to gather up the gang again, while Dutch comes up with the final plan. Listen, I will kill for my family. Any of you want to judge me for that? That's fine, but that is who I am. Anyone disagree? The gang is back together. Everyone is relatively happy considering their circumstances, uh, but everything turns to shit pretty quickly. So there is this millionaire guy, Leviticus Cornwall or something like that. Uh, by now we've robbed him like five times and each time was pretty nasty. So he hired some special agents, uh, Pinken P Pinkertons, Pinkerters, something like that, fucking... Uh, well, they've been harassing us from almost the beginning of the game. Here they are. After the location of our secret base become publicly known, it was time for a stealth mission to acquire a new one. So yeah, John is in jail after the bank robbery, and since Dutch has some bigger planning to do, it lays on your own initiative to save the guy. What are you doing here? It's good to see you too, partner. I meant I hadn't sent for you yet. I went. But I said that. Yeah, I know what you said. I felt different. I had a goddamn plan! They was talking of hanging me, Dutch. They was talking. And now they may come and hang us all! A lot of people give Dutch shit in this moment, but I can't but agree with him a little. Arthur is like this typical save everybody type of hero, with plot armor and stuff. Dutch's point of view actually makes a lot of sense. The boys just came back from Guam and got found in like first two days. All the money is on the bottom of the ocean, everyone has bounty on their head, and the gang is chased by other gangs, police, the government officials. Breaking into jail to save the guy doesn't seem like the smartest move in this particular scenario. Saving John was indeed a strategically bad move. Dutch wasn't happy. He probably wanted to lay low for a while, right? Uh, wrong. Uh, he just fucking kills that millionaire that we've robbed countless times. That guy is like Jeff Bezos of the Wild West. Uh, not sure, but probably. Uh, that's kind of attention grabbing. For the final plan, Dutch wants to make more enemies in the face of National Army. The idea is to blow up a bridge and steal the army money from the train. Uh, also, you know that if you press shift like five times, uh, a thing pops out? Uh, yeah, he here you need to mash it like crazy so you won't die. Sounds 
as good as you imagine. I did it. Come on, follow me. Find a way up there, on one of these verandas, through a building maybe, and get them. And do it silently. Well, obviously I'm gonna do it silently. Also, explain this to me. I shoot this thing. The pelt is perfect. Boom. Immediately turns to shit. Make that make sense. This next part contains a lot of very, very special people who I'm not sure how to call. The obvious choice is Indians, but I think it's offensive now and uh, Native Americans is a proper term. Uh, but then I read somewhere that they actually hate being addressed this way. Uh, so in order for me not to get in trouble, I'll call them locals. Is that okay? I hope that's okay. Uh, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not American. I, I don't understand why you guys keep coming up with new words all the time or change the meaning of the old ones. L like, I remember the word queer being offensive when I was in school, so now it's apparently okay. But then electric callboys were Eskimo callboys for like 10 years or something, and everyone was happy until who knows what happened. Anyway, Dutch has a final plan, but he needs to put away the attention from him to something else. Uh, in another twist of fate, he met an angry son of a local chief. Uh, you know what was going on at the time. The chief was like, we need to endure, there is no way we win this fight, and his son was a complete opposite. Uh, exactly what Dutch needed. So he clashes this young guy and his men with the National Army while saying how he's helping them. We should go. This is it! This... Well... Arthur... Put your hands up! Follow my lead. I got a plan. This is a good one. Um, ah! And again, this jump perfectly illustrates the point made in this picture. Again, Dutch is a leader. Not necessarily a good one, but indeed a leader. He's like Vince McMahon, who could never ask his wrestlers to do anything that he wouldn't do himself. He is usually in the same shit as his men, so there's no wonder why people follow him. I had a plan! I still have a plan! I have a plan! This is the plan! He's still a piece of shit, though. A bunch of locals went on to an unwinnable uphill battle, and Dutch was like, perfect, right on time, let's go. So the great master plan was to get the government bonds using locals as a distraction. Which makes sense, uh, it's a dick move, but logical one. But after his best man, his son, his brother, started to doubt him, it was time for Dutch to prove that he's still the leader and all the doubts were unjustified, right? <laughs> I need help! 
Remember what I said before, especially during the cliff jump? Uh, fuck that. He had no choice there. It's either dying in jail or drowning. Might as well take a gamble. He was never in the mud because he chose. He had no choice. It was never about the family. No one knew what the fuck his plan were. People were fighting within the gang and he never seemed to care. And also called love was just a manipulation into blind loyalty so people could be ready to do some crazy shit just to satisfy him. We rob Uncle Sam and we leave. You know, the women and the children and John and his family. I'm afraid I have to insist. I mean, we gotta let them go, because if the Pinkertons come through again, they will kill everyone. John, insist? Yeah, insist. Of course, pal. Whatever you think is best. I will see to it. Now, are we gonna rob a train? Sure. He insists upon it. He insists. Someone has a rather fragile ego for a gang member who is confident in his plans. But it might be just me. After all, this is Dutch's final plan. I fucked up the recording a couple of times, so ignore the default Arthur that's going to appear a couple of times. Oh no, they killed John, fuck. I'll get John, you protect that mother. Catch! The driver's dead, it's they ain't stopping, and we got to get off! Oh letter. my, Dutch is so sorry. This is so unfortunate. Come on, boys. Yeah. Also, Micah is a traitor. Surprise! Uh, just like Sasuke, so fucking both. Dutch, John. Oh look, John's actually not dead. Someone's been lying. Another big surprise. Now, as you can imagine, he and Arthur are not on the best of terms with the rest of the boys. Uh, also, there is those agents everywhere. Bullshit! If it's the last goddamn thing I do. Red Dead, Red Dead, let's fucking go! Get behind a rock! All right, Arthur, come on, let's go. No, we ain't both gonna make it. Arthur, get the hell out of here and be a goddamn man. You're my brother. I know. I know. God damn! Oh, I got you now, Black Lung. Rat, you rat. I'm a survivor, Black Lung. A survivor. That's all there is. Living and dying. Ah! Oh, this game had a couple of 
Death Stranding type musical interludes, uh, so why not have a fight off in the similar style? Especially because at this point you want nothing more than to demolish Micah's face beyond recognition. <laughs> Guess fucking what? Smashing shift time again, for fuck's sake! Fuck whoever is responsible for that. Yes! Finally! All that training was not in vain. It's over. And that's how you live a life of a gamer in the Wild West. I think it's a pretty common knowledge now that this game is on another level. If in the older games we had to imagine some details that were technically impossible to make, here they are present. The physics, interactions with the NPCs, NPCs interacting with each other, the world around you, it is all real. Countless activities, the heartbreaking side quests, Quest of the gang members. It's not in the video, but it's all there in the game for you to enjoy. But you know what? I don't even care about these things that much. One of my favorite games, Mass Effect, doesn't really have the best gameplay and even janky at times. However, the characters and the story captivated me. Unfortunately, that's not the case with this game. The thing I'm after in games is the context. And here I only got it in the second half for the reasons I talked about earlier. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, I'd say that this game can be enjoyed even by non-gamers. Because it's more than just a game, it's a great fiction. Yes, there is nothing groundbreaking about the plot, but it's emotional and real. I can't say that the characters are too unique, but they are genuine and vivid, and I believe them. I believe that Dutch wanted the best for everyone, but got lost in his own plans, got too logical yet short-sighted. I believe that Micah was a survivor, who betrayed because he weighted the odds and chose the best one for himself. I believe that John was afraid of family responsibility, but gradually realized what really mattered to him and matured. Even though she's not really in the video, I believe that Sadie wanted to live a nice family life, have kids and be a good wife, yet she was tough enough not to break and turned into a monster because that was the only option. And I believe that Arthur was indeed a ruthless man of action, loyal to whom he believed, and it took him a great deal of suffering to see clearly what kind of life he led and what kind of man led him. So I want to thank sorry for the name butchering, Benjamin Byron Davis, Peter Blomquist, Rob Waithoff, Alex McKenna, and Roger Clark for putting such a great performance that made me fall in love with these characters. So now I'm definitely playing the first game, and uh, I haven't talked about the acting much uh, or at all, uh, yet I think that this is one of the best parts of this game. Uh, so, soon enough I make a video with some of the best acting in the game. Not all, but some, so keep an eye for that one. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs> Almost got a pail full. John Marston, Terror of the Turds. Oh, it splashes. <laughs> I still protest my innocence. This woman ripped me out of my bed, kidnapped me, then let Langton kidnap me, then you killed them all and kidnapped me back. I'm the victim here. <laughs> Damn you. Arthur saved my life before he passed. I don't talk about him much. But I think about him. Me too. And Dutch? <laughs> Ran off someplace. Such a shame. Last call. Oh, anyway, John.
Better get on my train. It's really lovely seeing you. Oh, here. It's for you. Thank you. Take care now. Bye. See, you don't like a joke. 